So now let's have a look at how an if statement and a case statement would work. And they're pretty simple. So let's start off with the if statement. Let's say we have a statement called if x equals 1. Now, this is actually what we call a condition. What we're saying in the code is if our value is equal 1, do something. So usually an if statement will then follow a, a, a list of commands. In this case, I just put in do x, y, and z. And at the end of the if statement, we do an end. In SAP, you'll see it, it'll be called a end if. And then we can carry on to say that if x equals 2, do something different. In this case, ABC, we put an end and we can keep on carry on. So let me just do another one. If x equals 3, we keep on doing, we can go in add infinitum. Right? So all of these if statements, if x equals 1, x equals 2, x equals 3, they're all what we call conditions. Do something if the value is something different. And the way the program would work is, first of all, it would evaluate this condition here and say, is it true or not? If it's true, of course, I will do um, x, y, and z. If it's not true, I'll skip it. I'll go right to the end. I'll go to the next command, which in this case is another if statement. So I'll evaluate if x equals 2. Um, if x is not equal to, then uh, of course I will skip the do abc here. I'll jump to the next one, the next line in the command, and I'll do, uh, I'll evaluate if x equals 3. And that's pretty simple. It just goes down straight to the end of the code, grouping this if statement together. And this is pretty similar for the case statement. So if you had a case, what you are doing is that you're saying case uh, x, right? And you then say, okay, what is the value of x? And then you say, if x is one, then again, do x, y, and z. x equals two, do abc. And finally, if x equals three, you can say do one, two, three. And then you have a n case statement. Yeah. You can also have an else, which is do nothing or do something else. So what you can say is, if it's one, two or three, do something. If it's not any of those values, you have an option to do something else. So what the system is going to do is look at the value of X, look up what it is down here. And in this case, let's say it's three, and then it'll do one, two, three. And that's basically it. That is how an if statement works. That is how a case statement works. So now if you look at the if statement and the case statement, you notice that they actually do the same thing. The, only, the main benefit of using a case statement is most systems treat it slightly differently when it wants to actually execute it. In the if statement, it actually evaluates if x is equal to 1, if x is equal to 2, if x equals to 3, and so forth. That means it, run, it actually has to do three checks. In the, in the example of the case, you can see the system, what we'll do is to, it'll reach a case statement. It'll say, okay, I know what my value of X is and it looks through and finds where the value of X is. In this case, X is equal to three and I'll immediately execute uh, the condition for X equals to three. And you can see it's slightly more efficient, slightly faster. And the systems, most systems who interpret these kind of languages do it that way. One other thing, just from a programming perspective, it's a lot, lot easier to make case statements because they're all grouped together logically rather than have what we call nested loops, which is you have an if statement, then another if statement, then another if statement. It's just too complex 
uh, or very complex to develop. So most people like to use case statements when they can over an if statement. If statements are generally used to test one condition and then after that to do a lot, a lot of code. Um, we don't usually get if statement, then another if statement, then another if statement. So now let's have a look at another command, which is the loop command. So first of all, a loop just basically says, keep on doing something until you stop. So let's assume we have a loop command here and we say loop until x equals a condition zero. Within that loop, we have our logic. Okay, and let's start off with, in our example, x equals 10. And in our loop, as we said before, we have some logic. And of course, we then want to reduce the quantity of 10. If not, the loop executes ad infinitum. In this case, we say x equals x minus 1. And we end our loop. And the way the system will work is it will say, okay, I start off is x equals 10. Loop until x equals 0. In this case, it's not. It's 10. So I'll keep on going. And this is our condition. So x equals 0 to exit the loop. That's our condition. And at the moment, x equals 10. It'll go down, do the logic. And now x equals x minus 1, which is 9. So at the end of the loop, it checks again our condition and says, is x equals 0? It says, no, it's 9. OK. I then execute the loop again. And x equals 8. It says, OK, I'll go back out the loop. I'll test the condition again. It says, nope, x is not equal to 0. It is equal to 8. And this goes on again and again and again. So now assume that x equals 1. We've gone through the loop a few times. It's now equal 1. It goes down here. x equals x minus 1. So now the value is 0. It then goes back into the loop and says, is x equals 0? And it says, uh, yes, it is, sir. Um, in which case, it then will stop and the loop will exit out. And it will carry on with the code after the loop. It'll do something else. It'll do x, y, and z command. So that is a loop. And a loop is great for doing a number of things. And you'll see it in the code. One is to do something a number of times. And the other is to loop based on number of records. So for example, let's say I have a table with five records. And what I can do is I have a loop and it goes through um, all of the commands using the first record. And then it goes through the, the loop again using the second record and the third record and the fourth record. And that's also a particular usefulness of a loop. You can run lots of logic uh, based on a lots of number of records. So for example, you could say, I have 10 customers and I can loop um, for through my logic for each of those customers, testing it for something. 